Birds endemic to oceanic islands are among the most beautiful and diverse, but also the most threatened. This cabinet is packed with artefacts that represent a snapshot in time, but while these species have remained sealed within drawers, their descendants have been pitted against a plethora of threats with a unique potency. These Juan Fernandez fire crowns haven't seen sunlight in over a hundred years. The specimens are crumpled, yet under the museum's fluorescent white lights, flickers of life are stoked. The feathers dance with colour, as if a hand has brushed over velvet, smoothing the threads to create a shimmering surface. The male is bright orange and brown, embellished with gold flickers on a crown which smoulders like embers. The female is a deep green with a sapphire crown, and dotted amid a sea of lustreless feathers, shining tips are accentuated. This species has been critically endangered since 1994 and is a classic example of an oceanic island endemic at risk of extinction. A 2011 survey estimated that fewer than 500 mature individuals remain and the population is ever decreasing. The major driver of losses is invasive species, adversaries that threaten the fire crown in a range of ways. These birds undergo nocturnal torpor, which scientists suggest may make them particularly vulnerable to invasive predators such as rats and cats, and the clutches of these evolutionarily naive species are always easy pickings. Other alien species exacerbate the fire crown's plight by applying increased competition. A self-introduced competitor, the greenback fire crown, occupies a very similar ecological niche. Recently, scientists from Denmark and Brazil found that the local abundances of the two species are negatively correlated. Males seem unaffected by the presence of competitors, usually winning direct conflicts. However, females suffer from interference competition, being pushed out of quality foraging habitat. Overall, the sheer number of competitors may be inflating the cost of defending a feeding territory, the result being a less secure supply of food. And conspiring with this gang of invasives are further menaces that compound the plight. Areas of native vegetation have been shrinking for centuries due to land clearance and wood harvesting. The fire crown is now restricted to a tiny range of 11 square kilometres, and once again alien species are responsible for exacerbating the situation. Rabbits degrade the remaining refuges, and elmleaf blackberry competes with the endemic cabbage tree on which the nectivorous birds rely in summer. This concerted pressure, applied by invasives and habitat degradation, has disarmed the population of its defences against stochastic natural events. Following a tsunami in 2010, there was a steep fall in population size and availability of food plants. Some island birds do seem to show more resilience than conservationists could hope for. The Christmas imperial pigeon's resilience to a cascade of devastating threats came as a surprise to many conservationists, who had classified the species as critically endangered. Alien species actually assisted the recovery. The pigeon previously favoured plateau forest and so was hit by phosphate mining that cleared about one third of this habitat. But the alien Japanese cherry flourishes on these former mine sites and provides a rich source of food for much of the year. Nevertheless, these positive cases are comparatively rare, a lucky gift from nature. For other species, all hope appears to be lost. The Jamaican petrel is muted and shadowy, as if veiled in smoke. A little light has been shone on the seabird's status. Even after four years of extensive searches in remote forests, the bird was not found. Despite the last sighting being in 1879, the petrel remains classified as critically endangered because their nocturnal behaviour would make any remaining individuals particularly elusive. Thus formally, the petrel still teeters on the edge of extinction, but not because of the scientific community's faint optimism, but rather due to the need to exhaust any remaining hope. What little is known about this species' fate again tells a troublingly typical tale. Predation of eggs by introduced rats and of adults by introduced mongooses caused dramatic declines in these birds, evolutionarily ill-equipped to cope with such pressures. The story of the Hawaiian honeycreepers provides perhaps one of the most complete and calamitous compendiums of threats faced by an island endemic. The group shows a remarkable diversity, having undergone a radiation similar to that of Darwin's finches. They expanded into all manner of niches across the entire archipelago. Yet since the arrival of man, a troop of threats has conspired to bring about the retreat of this radiation. At least eight species are extinct, and many more are now restricted to small pockets of forest. Both Kauai Nakapu and the Oahu creeper seem to vanish at the end of the 19th century. Among the most obvious drivers of decline is forest clearance for cattle ranching. Introduced species such as rats, cats and owls are here once again perpetrators. Aliens also contribute to increased competition for resources. Hungry broods require protein-rich native caterpillars, but these are preyed upon by yellow jacket wasps and Argentine ants. Following an outbreak of introduced yellow jacket wasps, the Hawaii Akepa had a year of poor reproductive success. Some aliens have a more pervasive impact. Not only do pigs damage habitat, their introduction also aids the spread of mosquitoes carrying novel diseases such as avian pox and malaria. 
Lowland forest, while ideal for many honeycreepers, is also favourable for mosquitoes. Higher altitudes once helped stave off mosquitoes, but this area of refuge is predicted to decrease substantially due to climate change. Rising temperatures will cause an upward shift in cloud forest, and following closely at its heels will be the zone of malarial risk. Overall, invasive species have been associated with the extinction of at least 71 bird species since 1500. Behind invasives, hunting and trapping still represent the second biggest cause of losses. Critically, while these statistics are startling, the stories of these species demonstrate that threats do not act in isolation, but instead form networks and cascades that augment the magnitude of declines and the complexity of a conservationist's task. <laughs>